Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go through my EDC fixed blade haul that I picked up from Blade Show 2024 in Atlanta. If these aren't your thing and you rather folders, I did my pocket knife haul the other day. You go check that out. Or if you hadn't seen that and you want to see it, go check that out to this one. I got to say, I think I got more excited about the EDC fixed blades than I did my folders because I've been really, really enjoying carrying them. I carry one just about every day now and I like to pocket carry my fixed blades. I got... Quite a few videos on my EDC fixed blades and let's check out these new ones. I've been wanting to pick one of these up for a while. This is coming from Exodus Knife and Tool. This is his Adventure Craft 3. The reason I like this one is because of how slim the form factor is. Now, I would have liked the fold over Kydex sheet. That would have been really, really nice because it would have kept this super minimal. But even with the two-part sheath, it's still very minimal and I have a lot more options to clip it. It came with a soft loop. That'd be another easy way to carry this one. This is a smaller one. I went with uh, Topographic Kydex. And this was one of his custom shop ones. These are made by White River Knife and Tool here in the U.S. And here is a knife. So basically, it has like a steak knife profile. Easy to carry because it's nice and slender. This is like a multicolored burlap micarta. Beautiful softening. And I already know that White River does a fantastic job. I've owned several of their M1 series knives. And this particular one... One has like a green, I'm guessing it's the Cerakote on here. You see right there, the custom shop because of the Cerakote and the scales. This is in S35VN. I'm guessing this is numbered 2159. This one's going to be super easy for me to carry. And I can't wait to start getting this one in the pocket. This right here is the Schwartz and Burnley Knives Collaboration Turn. It's Lucas Burnley's design. Schwartz, he did the machining on it in his shop. Comes with an ulti clip. Pretty much my favorite means of carrying them. Two part kydex, nice drainage hole. Now this is a skeletonized knife and I'm either gonna cord wrap it or I'm really contemplating on making myself some micarta scales for this one because I love, love the overall profile of this. It's gonna be a very versatile blade, easy to use the tip. And then your belly is very gradual so you can make in hand cuts nice and then in pinch grip you can do cutting on a flat cutting surface. So this one's gonna be very, very useful. It's CPM Magna Cut and he treated it properly. I think he does it 63 64 and he grinds these nice and thin this is coming from dry creek forge knives handcrafted in kentucky and this is his toad model in 52 100 steel with black canvas micarta scales i found out about this maker through sam over at edc nc if you're not following this channel go check him out he's a younger creator and really nice guy he had one of these and he's the one that actually linked me up with dry creek forge so i could uh, go find his booth so we, we got a fold over taco style kydex sheath that's just the way i like it uh, this one has some of the most comfortable contoured black canvas micarta scales well this thing is hand melting i love how he has the three sections of jimping so if you're choked back right here you got jimping come up a little bit i got jimping and if i want to do a pointer finger grip i got jimping as well not to mention i think this thing is an absolute beauty it's got a dark acid stone wash finish on it. Love that swedge. And then you have this little clip right here. Now, this is a lot more belly than I usually go for. But I just like the overall design itself. Fuller's on both sides. Feels like it's ground decently thin. It should be a good little slicer. I will link whatever I can down in the description if any of these are available. I know he does drops on his stuff, so he might be sold out at the moment. Just follow him on Instagram. So this is the Venerate Knife and Tool Aegis. It's first OEM design, fold over taco style Kydex sheath. It's got the little retention spot there. So if you need to add some retention, you can. It's got nice positive click. It's got a little bit of rattle, but I, I could tighten that up. And he sent me home with this. I did not purchase this and he wanted me to do testing with it and give him some feedback. So that's what we plan on doing with this one. This is more of like a tactical, I guess, EDC. Not so much something that I would really typically pick up myself. I'm not really a Tanto fan, but I will say it's a very well-made Tanto. It's got a nice deep hollow grind here that comes down, feels like nice and thin. Then you have the flat grind up there in the front. This is a Cerakote and you can get it with these brown textured G10 scales or black. Nice bolt-on construction so if I need to clean it off I can. Now something that I don't love is the blade steel. These are in ADCR V2. I guess if you're going to be hard using this or you know if you're going to be doing some thrusting type motions with this not a bad steel but as far as an EDC steel it's not 
something that I love, especially here in the South, because if this coating comes off at all, it's gonna rust quick for me. It's not a deal breaker for me, but like I said, I'm not really a Tanto fan. Now this one, the ADC RV is Rockwell to 61 HRC, so I'm interested to see how it hold up. I'm gonna do the testing on it. We'll say it's comfortable in hand, and if you are using this as, say, a self-defense knife, this little spot right here is super comfortable, very locked in, and I feel like I could jab through this table right here, no problem. But, you know, overall, it's a very well-made knife. I love that it's made in the USA, and we'll see. I'll see how this ADC RV holds up. I think it was Blade Show Texas coverage I saw it. The number five, we have the Civivi Altus Fixed Blade. This thing is awesome. I cannot wait for this to come out. This is a prototype. Two-part kydex sheath. I would love for them to make a, a fold-over kydex sheath for this one. I need to keep it very minimal. Now, this one came with the Alti clip on it. I doubt that that's what they're going to have on it. This is one awesome, awesome EDC fixed blade, especially for somebody that is wanting to get in the EDC fixed blades, but they don't want to spend a whole lot of money. I'm, I'm sure these will probably come in under $100 if I had to take a wild guess. And man, the Altus is already a very versatile profile right here. You got that low tip drop point. Easily use the tip on the things to do detail work, or if you had to pierce into something, you got a nice, decently robust tip. Nice slicey blade, because we know Civivi likes to grind them the way they should be. <laughs> I thought they used Nitro V for the folder. This one looks like it's in 14Z20. And I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. That may keep the price down a little bit more. You got nice contouring on the G10 scales. Perfect size for my medium sized hands. You do have a lanyard hole. So if you have XL hands or large hands, you can put a lanyard there. This is just going to be a great one. I cannot wait for these to come out. And number six, we have another White River Knives M1 Caper on this one. I had the M1 Pro and I had the, the cord wrapped on as well. This one, you got two part Kydex sheath. It has the contoured burlap micarta scales that are pinned on with the hollowed out tubes. Such a good knife. It's a burden trout style knife, but it's an excellent EDC size. I've tested and reviewed one of these a long time ago on the channel, and I absolutely loved it. The original ones are in S35VN, and that one performed outstanding. And I couldn't pass this one up. This one's in CPM MagnaCut, and this was one of their factory seconds. I think it was 100 bucks at Blacia. They had several factory seconds there wasn't a whole lot left whenever i got there I see the second right there that's what that means and their quality control is very very tight anyway so most of the factory seconds maybe had a little scratch or something on the scales or you know one of the flare tubes maybe had a little scratch on it this one it looks like it might have had a little bit of a wonky tip but hey for 100 bucks and they rock well these i think 62 to 64 and I already tested out the Ursus Cub from them in MagnaCut, and it, it performed outstanding. So, super excited to get one of these in, especially at this price. Next up, we have the Best Tech VK Core. I've been wanting to check this one out, but things came up right before Blade Show, so I didn't really get a chance to grab one. But Best Tech was kind enough to send this one back with me because I, I told them I wanted to check it out, review it. I like how it's a fold over taco style sheath, and you can see the little hole right there. That's his thing, the designer. He puts the little copper dots in there. Another one that is skeletonized, not my favorite, but Best Tech did another great job of softening all these edges. And I just love this profile. I have a folder, I think it's a Kaiser the VK Void or whatever that he did. That was his original design. Then he did another collaboration with Best Tech with the folder. Definitely wanted to check this one out. I'll cord wrap this one probably, and if I like it enough, I will put some scales on it. Love the stone wash finish. That is a piece of copper in inlaid in there. You can't really feel it. It's inlaid in there. Nice. You got some nice jimping up top that does its job. Now these are in 14C, 28 in steel with Best Tech quality. You know, Best Tech does a phenomenal job with their work. It's got a high flat grind on here. That is the Best Tech VK Core. So this next one won Knife of the Year at Blade, Texas. And that is the brand new Vero Malin. And I think this one's a very exciting one for a few reasons. So you have a fold over taco style sheath. Now it's a wide sheath. I don't really understand why they went so wide here. I know it's you got a push off point, but I would have much rather the little flap because it 
makes it almost as wide as a two-part kydex. One of the things that I really, really want to check out is the Vero clip. I hope he makes these more readily available to buy, you know, to purchase just a clip because this thing works outstanding. It's a titanium clip. It's got nice spring to it where you can get it in the pocket pretty nicely, but see how this, it goes over this hump. You know, Vero does such a great job with his engineering on things like this goes in and out of the pocket very nicely it holds it in there once you have the knife in there only thing that I, i'm trying to figure out whenever you go to grab the knife you got to kind of put your finger right here to be able to push it out now my sheath is super super tight and it might have been because I tightened up these on there. I don't know. But it's definitely a beautiful, beautiful fixed blade. I had the titanium scales on it right now. But I also bought the black canvas micarta scales. Now I did purchase this one. Just like on my Vero Axon fixed blade, this thing is ground. So nice and thin. I can feel it. I mean, it feels very thin. Look at this right here. Very thin behind the edge. Cannot wait to do some cutting with this. It has way more belly than I usually go for, but to use it for flat cutting service, if you're gonna food prep or anything on a flat cutting service, this can be great because of that deeper belly. And you still have, you know, a little bit of straight edge to do in hand cuts. If you had to break down some boxes, you could easily do that. I'm not sure, I don't know the steel. I think it's M390 on this one. This is number 104. I think it's a very good looking fixed blade, no doubt. So this right here is my third Steve Kalari custom knife, Steadfast. So now I have his regular drop point. This is his original design on the Steadfast. This one's an M390 with a 64 HRC, I think. Yeah, this one is in Crewware at I think 65 HRC, and this one's in MagnaCut at 65 HRC. Nice. I bought all three of these. Even though he's my friend, I don't ask him to give me things. I mean, he's my friend. I want to support him any chance I can. And his stuff... Oh. <laughs> y'all let me know which one of these I'm trying... I can't decide which one would y'all like to see a review on. But if y'all want to see a review on all three, I can. This one's in MagnaCut at 65 HRC. Urgh. So all of them are going to be outstanding performers. Love those Tiffany blue liners. Whew. And his handles. So comfortable. So yeah, this one has the vintage Ninja Turtle micarta. So it's like a canvas micarta with like different colored greens in there from being super old, I'm guessing. Then he has a cross cut on the side. His handles are hand melting. His grinds are laser beam thin. Look at that. Yeah. He put an edge on it at the show for me. This thing is nice and sticky sharp. So yeah, I cannot wait to start using this one. It even has a 90 degree spine if you want to strike a ferro rod. He sells a lot of them on Blade Binge. I'm an affiliate there. I have, I'll usually put a link down below. But next up, we got the TKL Combatant V2, I guess you could say, because he just did a little bit. He reworked the handle on, I think, the sheath on this one. New sheaths right here are outstanding. He put the micro rivets on this side. And just listen to this. No rattle. Easy to get to, easy to get out. I like this one. It's just a nice drop point blade. It's got his nickel boron, but it's a it's a cool finish that they have over the top of it. It makes it very slick, so it slices very nicely, penetrates very nicely, whatever. I love these Tiffany blue and black G10 scales. I think they look outstanding. Very, very comfortable handle. You can get so many different grips for his knives. You can get G10, Micarta. I think you might even better get wood if I remember correctly. This particular one is an ADCR V2, USA made. And this one was sent home by TCAL to do some review and testing on this one. ADCR V2 is definitely not my go-to steel of choice, but his knives are purpose-driven knives. You know, they're made to be tough. He's a veteran, and I think he supplies some veterans with knives as well, if I remember. And he wants them to be super tough. So a lot of them aren't super slicers, but they perform well. I've, I've tested the Piranha. It did, you know, perfectly fine and did another one as well. But yeah, I like, they're very well-made knives. This one right here has been my most carried since I got home from Blade, especially in this sheath. This one is not out yet. He's trying to figure out a date to drop these. It comes with this uh, fold-over taco-style Kydex sheath with a beautiful lip on it to push off on and it functioned really really well but this one was hand delivered by mr keith from griffin co 
had blade show and i'm not usually a leather guy but whenever it's a form fitting leather like this comes with the pocket clip now this is not something that i think you can go to this guy's site this is from bad goods right here go check him out i will leave a link to his site down below excellent excellent leather work here check that out the logo there then you have the griffin coat right here it's a perfect edc fixed blade right here there's the knife. I opted for the textured titanium scales and I also got the natural, can natural canvas micarta scales to go with the folding knife. So these are going to be part of his X series that, you know, Pena already had an X series, but he, he didn't know that whenever he decided to go with that name and he already did all the stuff. So I think he's going to go with it. No big deal, I don't think. I don't know the names of these yet. As soon as I do, I will let y'all know. And whenever i do the review of course i will have the name so perfect four finger grip for me you even got a little jimping if you want to come choke up on it you got a beautiful low tip drop point with a nice and deep hollow grind this thing comes down nice and thin look at this tip you got a needle like tip to do pokey pokey stuff or drag cuts you need to do some detail tracing out of something you can definitely do that with this one nice contouring hidden lanyard post back there I'm going to slap on the micarta scales as well just to see. This skeleton eyes in there. These are in CPM MagnaCut steel. These are made by Best Tech, OEM for this. And I'm pretty sure they rock well. The MagnaCut from 62 to 64, if I remember correctly. I started the testing on this one and just taking my time with it because it doesn't have a, a drop bait on these yet. But like I said, as soon as I know something, I'll let y'all know. Got this at a dealer. Forgot the name of the dealer. If I, if I find the card, I'll put it up on the screen. This is a Bark River. She's super, super tight on this one. Barely wants to fit in here. This is the Bark River PSK EDC. And this one's in CPM Magna Cut Steel. Full height, convex grind. Feels nice and thin. The finishing on these micarta scales are beautiful. I usually like the matte finish, but if I felt like I needed to, I, I could easily do it. I like the look better, of course, because that polish really brings out the grain in the canvas. Mosaic pens, red G10 liners. Just an overall excellent little EDC size because it's got a full size handle, or at least for me, I can easily get a four finger grip. A smaller blade, but it, it's going to be an easy one to maneuver. I can still use the tip if I need to. I can use that belly to make finesse cuts. Got a 90 degree spine on it. Not super sharp, but you can definitely strike a fair ride with that. This is a DLT exclusive. When I see these pop up, I will link them. This is an LT right, the daily carry. Don't love the, the sheath. It's a very nice quality sheath, but I don't tend to carry my knives on my belt. This one, more comfortable in hand because of its thicker scales and his contouring is beautiful. He's on the box, it says Damacarta scales. Don't know who, who's the actual maker, but this one has a drop point blade, super sharp 90 degree spine, like on all L2 rights pretty much. And this one is in CPM 3V steel. I think that X denotes that. Pin on construction, not the best when it comes to having 3V steel because 3V is not a stainless, it's a tool steel. If for some reason water were to get underneath those scales, I'd probably be out of luck there. <laughs> USA made, of course, LT right stuff, all of it's USA made. I'll show you this card. This guy met with me at the pit after the blade show and his company is Under the Bridge Scales. That's his original company. He makes some really, really awesome scales. Like, I'll show you the ones on this one and you'll see what I'm talking about. So there's his contact information. Now his company is going to be under the bridge tool and scale because he's now diving into making his own fixed blades. First off, right out of the gate, this is just like that Griffin sheath. Absolutely love it. Very slim form factor. It comes with an ulti clip. And when it's in the pocket, that's all that's sticking out. So it looks like it's like a butterscotch paper micarta maybe. I think it's all vintage stuff. He's got some G10 pins it looks like. And then check this out. It looks like carbon fiber. And then cross cut micarta. You see that? That is so, so sick. And then check this out. I totally forgot what this is. I think it's a wood if I remember correctly. Wood. It almost looks like a wood and carbon fiber to find out feel terrible that i couldn't uh, but my memory is terrible and then you have another micarta pin there and you have these beautiful look at the liners it's like the side cut of the looks like carbon fiber 
So he started out making sweet scales like this, and now he's made a few fixed blades, and I feel honored that he asked me and Jared Neves from Neves Knives to check out his first couple fixed blades. So this is one of them, and this one's right up my alley. I'm pretty sure it's called his Tidbit model, and it's like a fish and fowl type knife. I can get to that tip beautifully. It feels nice, comfortable, very lightweight because it's pretty slender. And we'll see how it feels in hand once he wants me to do all my normal stuff with it. You got a nice high flat grind that comes down nice and thin. When I say thin, thing is nice and thin. I can feel it. It's like a little wafer behind there. And it's got Madden Cut Steel at 64 HRC. Outstanding. And not to mention the edge that he put on this feels nice and toothy. We're going to see. It's grabbing skin right away. Nice sharpening choil. So I plan on doing the testing for this one today. And yeah, I can't wait. I'm excited about this one. Definitely go check him out. I'll try to leave links to all his stuff down below. And, you know, for his first knife, I mean, this is like, I don't know which one this is. First, second, third, whatever. I I'm pretty impressed. You know, he's, he's even got like a nice hand rub satin finish on it. You know, is, is it perfect? No, but I couldn't make something. No way I can make something this nice. And he already a uh, skilled craftsman making these beautiful scales. So I think he's got a bright future in the knife game. Uh, y'all let him know what y'all think about this. And like I said, stay tuned for this review. I love supporting really new makers that trust me with their products to, you know, give them an honest, fair review. And that's that's all, I, all I'm here for. That I got from the TCAL booth is this beautiful, beautiful leather sheath for my TKL Piranha. This thing is impressively nice. Look how thick that is. Excellent clip retention. Once I put this in my pocket, it doesn't go anywhere. Delta Sheath LLC, I got to meet the guy. Super nice guy, Lewis. I'm definitely gonna be checking out his site for some more custom sheath stuff. The only time I really carry a leather sheath is whenever it's a, it's a nice pocket sheath like this that'll bury the knife in the pocket nicely. I'm gonna go check him out. I will leave his stuff down in the description as well. Well, this is a shot of all of them. Like I said, please, please let me know down in the comments which one of these would you like to see a review on first. I will say I'm trying to get this one and this one done sooner rather than later. But after that, let me know which I'd like to see a review on after. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave those down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute, absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace. <laughs>